the first question, I'm just going to go through them as they came in. Um, the first one was, is this a redo of NRCS's water quality indicator of two decades ago? I, I, I would like to know which this indicator is because I, I, I was not with NRCS two decades ago. <laughs> I'm not aware of this tool. If the person you know asking this question can send me a link, I would certainly like to review that and see if you know you know how we are different or how we have contributed more. Or it's the same we we do. I, I I'm 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 a, I would like to know more about it. Okay, maybe we can get you connected up with that's David Moffat. Yeah. Um, second yeah. question that came in is: Does this include groundwater quality, or is it surface wa water index only? It's a surface water edge of the field index only. Okay. Third question: uh, It was not clear about the statement there was no in, there were no index tools for agricultural runoff. What about the phosphorus index used across the U.S.? Yeah, phosphorus index gives you sort of a, you know, how much, uh, it gives you, because it gives you a sort of a real water quality ranking. PO, PI index, phosphorus index does not give you a, a ranking for water which might be exiting from the, from the field. So it's a ranking of water quality which exits from the field okay. rather than giving what's happening in the field. Okay. Uh, next question, does this uh, tool interact with the web soil survey to gather soil information for a selected field? It does not, but that's what I, and like I said, you know, this, uh, I hope with working with this uh, national lab in Idaho where they have a GIS interface, we might be able to access some of the, you know, information from web soil survey. But what I have in the, in the document which is attached to the tool as well as on the paper is basically how to access this parameters using the web soil survey for your area. I'm, it's very well defined the procedure which user can use to access different factors which are you need to select from your from the pull down menus okay next question uh, will this tool be incorporated into CDSI and I'm not familiar with that acronym but maybe no, CDSI is conservation dis uh, conservation dis uh, delivery streamlining tool we would love to have that thing happen, but it's it can be some time before even the CDSI is. You know, we are they are working on the first first go around where they are taking care of the financial comp part of the processes which NRCS field office handle. We have it what we call transition plan to incorporate some of the tools NRCS has how to go into CDSI. It obviously is long term goal of C and RCS is to incorporate everything into under one desktop framework and ultimately will it will happen. When it will happen is anybody's guess. Okay. Next question. How does uh, this tool compare to the Chesapeake Bay nutrient tracking trading tool? Uh, yeah. and then NTT dot org yeah. be based on the Apex model. Yeah, NTT. I have been part of developing NTT. You know, that's one of another my another baby, which has been used by Chesapeake Bay and Maryland and Tia and you know Oregon. So NTT is based upon the process model. It uses Apex in the background to it runs Apex model, brings back the information, and that's more quantitative. You know, it gives you points of nitrogen or phosphorus being lost from by doing certain management or conservation practices. This tool is basically a ranking tool. It just gives you a rank. It does not give you any sort of quantitative values of how much nutrients or phosphorus or nitrogen or sediment you are losing under different scenarios which you are trying to evaluate. So this is basically the first approximation tool, while NTT is a more rigor and more quantitative tool which a person can use if they want to find out exactly what happened in terms of real losses of nutrients or sediments from under different management scenarios. Okay. How does, how well does the, uh, tool respond to extreme weather events versus monthly average precipitation, yeah. for instance? 
we have not incorporated any you know extreme events in this it's basically the overall only thing what we have been able to capture based upon the overall monthly averages and that's it so if you have a you know extreme event coming out then i think we have to have either run some more sophisticated model which takes event into account or do actual water quality monitoring <laughs> Okay. Yeah. How about uh, model input parameters for Florida? Oh, you try to, I will suggest person running this model and see if you like it. Another thing which I want to emphasize that in the, in the tool there is what we call weighting factors for each component and different factor with, within each component. So what we have been doing for some of the states, if they like to weight some particular component heavier than the other component, we can sort of work with the state office to rank those factors, you know, develop a different weighting factor for those components. So I would suggest just use the tool as it is and see how you like it, how you find it. And if there are factors which you'd like to have a different weighted, ask the, the state office to contact us and we could be able to sort of adjust some of the weighting factor to reflect their preferences. All right. Well, we are a couple minutes past the hour. Um, appreciate the great attendance of this meeting and today's webcast and hope that you're able to sign on March 21st. And if you have additional questions, uh, we can get you connected with uh, Harbins and um, get some more answers there. So uh, thanks, everyone, for being on the webcast today, and we hope to see you uh, again in the future. Yeah, I p thank you, everybody, for attending it, and you know, let me know if I can help anyway or you feel, you know, Obviously, we'd like to have some input from you guys that how we can further improve this tool. Only factor which I have been so emphasizing is the simplicity of the tool. It should be simple, easy to use. It's a, you know, apart from being this tool as a sort of a evaluation tool, it's a good learning tool for people to see how many components go in sort of agricultural operations and how they impact each other for, in terms of especially water quality.